Good evening and welcome to the News Roundup for Wednesday, February 22. I am Abigail Smythe. Among the stories in this evening's newscast, investigators launch search for bank employee who allegedly made off with more than $35 million. Three people dead, 11 injured in Manchester crash. Elderly farmer murdered in Clarendon. Two more students of Denham Town High School charged with assault. In business, Bank of Jamaica increases cash reserve requirements while maintaining interest rates. In the region, PAHO to strengthen cholera surveillance. And further overseas, daughter of Malcolm X suing New York City Police Department and other agencies for his murder. And in sports, reggae girls suffer third straight defeat. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. It is understood that investigators have launched a search for a bank employee who allegedly made off with more than $35 million from a Senton-based financial institution. The employee allegedly loaded the cash into a bag and walked out of the institution after telling her supervisors that she was heading for lunch. When she failed to return from lunch, a probe by the bank revealed that millions of dollars from its vault had gone missing. It was later discovered that the bank employee had fled the island after boarding a flight for Canada. Three people are dead from injuries they sustained in a two-vehicle crash along the Winston Jones Highway in Manchester Tuesday night. The deceased are Wayne Morris, a porter at the Mandeville Regional Hospital of Cheapside in Christiana, Darnley Clark of Spalding Clarendon, and Fabian Uta of Cobla District, Manchester. It was reported that about 9 p.m., two taxis, a Toyota Pro Box and a Toyota Isis, were traveling along the roadway when the vehicles got out of control and overturned. Some 14 persons sustained injuries and three have since died. The others remain in hospital. The police have yet to determine the cause of the crash. The Clarendon police are investigating the murder of an elderly farmer whose body was discovered at his home in Bellas Gate Wednesday morning. He has been identified as 73-year-old Winston Nelson. The police say Nelson's body was found around 8 o'clock with gunshot wounds to the chest and right hand. They say residents reported hearing gunshots around 11 o'clock Tuesday night. A source says Nelson had been threatened following a long-standing dispute over the alleged destruction of his farm by animals. The source adds that Nelson had recently captured and slaughtered a goat which he alleged was among a herd that had been causing continuous destruction to his crops. The probe into Nelson's murder is ongoing. Up to February 20, Clarendon had recorded 16 murders, which is a jump when compared to the six homicides in the corresponding period last year. A man was killed and a policeman shot and injured on Daffodil Avenue in Union Garden, Kingston 13, Tuesday night. The dead man has been identified as 30-year-old Dwight McFarlane, otherwise called Greybeard, of a Spanish Town Road address. The injured policeman is a sergeant who works at the Hunts Bay Police Station. Reports are that around 7 p.m., McFarlane and the policeman were at a car wash when a black car drove up and men alighted from the vehicle. Police say the men pulled guns and opened fire, hitting McFarlane in the abdomen and other parts of his body. The policeman was shot in his leg and abdomen. The gunmen escaped from the area. Both injured men were taken to hospital where McFarlane was pronounced dead and the police officer underwent treatment and was admitted. His condition is considered serious but stable. The police have not yet established a motive for the attack. Two men were shot and killed and a policeman narrowly escaped injury during an attack by gunmen at Gut Bottom in Granville St. James on Tuesday. The deceased have been identified as 24-year-old Rexford Jarrett and 29-year-old Orin Reed, otherwise called Haga, a construction worker, both from Tucker St. James. It was reported that around 2.30 p.m., Reed and Jarrett boarded a silver Toyota Axio motor car. Reed was the 
driver and Jarrett was in the front passenger seat. Police say when they were about to drive away, their vehicle was blocked by a white Toyota Voxy. Two men armed with guns alighted from the vehicle and opened fire at Reed and Jarrett. Jarrett ran from the car. The policeman who was off duty witnessed the ordeal and called out to the gunman who opened fire at him. The cop, who is a constable, returned gunfire in the direction of the gunman who boarded the Voxy and sped away in the direction of Pit 4. When the shooting subsided, Reed was seen slumped over the passenger side of the Axio with gunshot wounds to his upper body. Jarrett was seen about 300 meters away, lying face down in a yard with gunshot wounds to his back. Both men were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. While processing the scene, police found 29mm spent shells. The matter has been reported to the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom. The St. Catherine Police are keeping close watch on the Quarry Hill community in Spanish Town following Monday's killing of a man. 34-year-old Damien Smith, otherwise called Kemar, was gunned down while disposing of garbage at his home. The police say the murder was a reprisal. A police source says Smith returned to the community in 2018 after being incarcerated. Following a flare-up of violence, he left the area in 2020 and returned late last year. On Monday, he was fatally attacked by unknown assailants. While no suspect has been held in the shooting, the police say the probe into the matter is far advanced. The Kingston Western Police have charged two more students of Denham Town High School with assault in separate cases. A 14-year-old student was charged for an incident which occurred at the school on February 16. It is reported that about 1.30 p.m. there was an altercation between the 14-year-old and another student. The aggressor reportedly hit the other student several times in the chest. In the second incident, which took place earlier that same day, a boy was hit in the face causing him to lose consciousness. The teen reportedly suffered severe pain to his ear, resulting in hospitalization. Just last week, two other students of the same school were arrested and charged in relation to the assault of a schoolmate, an incident that was captured on video and widely circulated, sparking national outrage. And again, the Kingston Western Police have charged a taxi operator accused of kidnapping a group of passengers and killing one of them. Tyrone Millwood, otherwise called Russian, of Caribbean Palm Estate, has been charged with murder, robbery with aggravation, and kidnapping. The incident occurred about 10 p.m. on February 11 along Port Royal Street. Investigators say Millwood, along with two other men traveling in a motor car operating as a taxi, picked up three passengers in the downtown Kingston area. The men then reportedly pulled knives and began robbing the passengers. During a violent struggle, the passengers received multiple stab wounds. It is reported that Millwood and his alleged cronies drove to a location where they abandoned the vehicle with the wounded passengers. One of the passengers died after being stabbed in the neck. The others were treated for their injuries. An investigation later led to the arrest of Millwood. The government has tabled new legislation seeking to amend the sentencing guidelines and impose longer prison terms for people convicted of murder and other violent crimes. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck tabled the Criminal Justice Administration Amendment Act 2023 Tuesday afternoon in the House of Representatives. Under the proposed legislation, murder convicts will have to serve a mandatory minimum sentence of 50 years before becoming eligible for parole. People sentenced to life imprisonment can apply for parole after serving a minimum of 30 years under the current law. In tabling the legislation, Minister Chuck said the current sentencing guideline is insufficient for the type of violence plaguing Jamaica and damaging the country's reputation and economy. He argued that, quote, the debilitating strain placed on the Jamaican populace from the daily loss of life by violent means demands that the penalty imposed sends a clear and unmistakable message to potential killers that murderers, when caught and convicted, will be severely punished, end quote. Under the proposed amendment, people who plead guilty to murder will have to serve a minimum of 30 years before becoming eligible for parole. In business, 
news, the Bank of Jamaica, BOJ, has decided to increase the cash reserve requirements for deposit-taking institutions by one percentage point while maintaining its interest rates. This is the latest move by the BOJ to drive inflation back within the target range of 4 to 6 percent. The new requirement becomes effective in the new financial year on April 1, 2023. Currently, deposit-taking institutions are required to hold a minimum of 5 percent of their Jamaican dollar denominated prescribed liabilities and 13 percent of their foreign currency denominated prescribed liabilities as cash reserves at the central bank. The central bank has decided to maintain its interest rate at 7 percent. The decisions were informed by the view that while incoming data was generally favorable for the inflation outlook, risks to inflation had become elevated. In the region, the Pan-American Health Organization PAHO says it is seeking to strengthen cholera surveillance in the region by focusing on preparing national laboratories in the Caribbean. The labs will have means of identifying and responding to potential imported cases of the virus. PAHO says the current outbreak of cholera in Haiti began on October 2 last year and a first case was reported in the Dominican Republic later that month. It says while the outbreak is currently contained to Hispaniola, a cholera risk assessment considered the risk of imported cases to other countries and territories of the region to be moderate. Cholera is an acute infection caused by ingestion of food or water contaminated with the bacterium Vibrio cholerae. It causes watery diarrhea, which without timely treatment can quickly lead to severe dehydration and death. On the international scene, the daughter of murdered black civil rights activist Malcolm X says she is suing the New York City Police Department and other agencies for his 1965 murder. Ilyasa Shabazz says U.S. officials fraudulently concealed evidence that they conspired to and executed their plan to assassinate her father. She announced the planned legal action on Tuesday at the site where he was fatally shot in New York exactly 58 years ago. Malcolm X, who was 39 at the time, was giving a speech in New York City when he was shot 21 times in front of his wife and daughters. Ms. Shabazz says the truth about the circumstances leading to the death of her father is important not only to the family but to his many followers and admirers. And finally, in sports, the reggae girls suffered their third straight defeat in the Cup of Nations friendly tournament in Australia Wednesday morning. They went down 3 nil to the home team. The reggae girls had lost their opening encounter in the Cup of Nations against Spain 3-0 before losing against the Czech Republic 2-1. Liverpool were sensationally beaten 5-2 by Real Madrid despite being two goals up early in their Champions League round of 16 first leg at Anfield. Vinicius Jr. scored twice before the interval to cancel out Liverpool's early advantage and three unanswered goals in the second half two of them scored by Karim Benzema. This condemned Jurgen Klopp's side to their heaviest home defeat in Champions League history. And that's it for your News Roundup for today. I am Abigail Smythe. Have a good evening and see you next time. Teach them! Hey, yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's Teach Them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!